Hey Sloby Nation, welcome back to another DIY Wednesday and I know my hair looks a little bit different. Today I have it both in piggy braids because I am going on day nine of not washing my hair. I'm kind of going off track here. My hair is just in braids for now and I promise I will do an updated bleach routine um, just because the roots are coming in and it needs to be re-bleached. So my home, if you guys haven't seen the tour, check out the tour. It's ridiculously huge. It's way too big for me, so that's why I'm getting roommates. But as far as the living room goes, I get to decorate it to my heart's content. One, I am trying to put myself on a very strict budget. Two, most of the items needs to be refurbished, revamped, or DIY'd. Three, I am trying to document it as much as I possibly can because I think it is a fun process. First DIY that I want to share with you guys is this coffee table. It's this beautiful faux marble metal trimmed coffee table. And I've actually have seen many many of these online before and they range from 200 to 300 dollars KL don't got that kind of pocket so I decided to fake it till I make it the boys who did live here before left me a coffee table so the coffee table was practically free all right so we're gonna go ahead and grab all of our stuff and let's get started Okay, first you're going to need a coffee table. There's nothing wrong with this one. It just is too bachelor for me. And so we're gonna make it all pretty. So when you buy or inherit used furniture, there's going to be some boo-boos on it. So we're gonna go ahead and fix this little corner real quickly. And it's just one simple, easy step. But before we get revamping happy, let's go ahead and protect your floors because the last thing you want is to create something awesome and then ruining something else. So, yeah, my mom already went through all of these coupons, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lay them down right now. So to fix that corner, I'm just using white Gorilla Wood glue. And it says the surface that is going to be glued needs to be dampened, so I just wetted a paper towel and I'm just squishing the moisture into the wood. And then I squeeze a little bit of glue into that area and the label says that a little goes a long way and I know sometimes we get a little glue happy but a little really does go a long way on this thing. All right, so I don't have any clamps or anything so I'm just gonna flip the table onto its side so that the table is going to be using its own weight to secure the glue. Keep in mind that you will want to use a lot of paper towels because you don't wanna end up having your table stuck to your floors. In about an hour or so, it should dry and then create this little foam thing that's dripping kind of out of the seam. Go ahead and just take an exacto knife and shave some of it off. So now it's prepping to paint and this is very important. I'm using a dust wipe to pick up all the dust that's on the coffee table. And then I use a wet wipe to just really clean up the table. Okay, now I'm going to prime my table and I'm using this primer because it's one of the best that's out there. And also you don't have to sand your table when you use this primer. The primer it goes on really easily. All you need is a really nice brush. You dip it into the primer and you go ahead and create a thin coat onto the table. And I am only doing one coat of primer here. And then I let it dry for about 30 minutes or so. Actually, it dries a lot quicker than that, but you know, if you're patient, 30 minutes is great. For paint, I am using the Waverly Acrylic Paint in their chalk line and it looks great on furniture. You can also buy the wax finishing for it to protect your furniture as well. And I went ahead and did only two coats of this. There are some spots that I had to go back and add in another dab or two, but two coats seems to be working fairly well with this. I also let each coat dry for about 30 to 45 minutes before I apply another coat. This way, the paint will adhere a lot better. Next, I am using marble contact paper. There's different brands of this that's out there. The one that I really like, I will link down below for you guys because it look exceptionally real. So applying contact paper is not an easy feat, but if you do it patiently inch by inch and then you rub it down with a credit card to smooth out all the bubbles, it will be very fruitful. However, if the bubbles doesn't come out, you can always just lift back that section and smooth it out again before you continue. Once your contact paper is on, go ahead and take an exact the knife and just trim off the edges. Now if you do it really nicely and precisely, like you can just stop here and you're done with the coffee table, but I am going to add one extra thing to it. So I went to Home Depot and I found these angled aluminum plates and you're going to need a pretty brawny person to cut this for you. I was going to cut it myself, but no one trusts me with any sharp tools. So here we are with a dude cutting this thing for me. Next to my new best friend would have to be this thing called liquid nails adhesive and I bought the clear 100% silicone stuff because I didn't want it to dry into a white bubble mess. And then what I do is I just apply a nice thin bead along the edge of the table and I place the angle irons onto the table and I press down firmly to make sure that it gets a good grip. 
And if any of the glue seeps out of the seams, go ahead and remove it right away. I also like to use Clorox wipes because it keeps everything very clean and it also removes the adhesive while it's still wet. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm going to let it dry for about an hour and then I'm gonna come back and add one last thing to it. So contact paper aren't always very large and so you're gonna end up with the seam when you're trying to match up the pattern and that bugged me a lot. So I decided to get a flat piece of aluminum and I'm just going to glue it down right on top of the seam. This way it will hide the seam and it'll still look more cohesive. Okay, finally done! Look how great this thing looks in comparison to what it was before. It's now ultra chic. So all of the stuff that I got on top of the table is either on sale from Target or I got it from the Salvation Army. So it's nice to find your knickknacks at the thrift store because it's so much cheaper. So what do you guys think of the DIY? Do you think it's doable on your end? The metal trim part might be a little bit difficult, so if any of you guys can find an alternative to that, that would be great if you share it with me so that I can use it in the future because cutting aluminum was a pain in the $2,000 is a lot, especially if I am trying to DIY a lot of things. However, a good majority of that $2,000 is going into the TV because I want a bomb TV. If that budget that I created for the living room can trickle into the dining room, that would make me very, very happy bear. Anyways, if you guys like this video, be sure to like it down below. Share with everyone that you know. And of course, send me fairy dusts by clicking subscribe because the fairy dust is what motivates me to continue to create more videos for you guys. Also, all the items that I used in this DIY will be linked down below because it makes it a lot easier for you guys as well. I know something sounds a little annoying. It's this bell bracelet that my mom and I got a couple of years ago and she was just like, I think you should wear it. And so, you know, I don't want to break her heart. So it's on my wrist right now. Y'all know what to do at the end of my videos. Remember to always rock on Slobies. Bye. Okay, Slobie Nations, welcome to my bathroom. And now this is my hair seven days later since the last time I washed my hair. And because I have bleached hair, I can get away with it.